In this watercolour tutorial, I'm going to be going through the complete painting process with you from start to finish. And I'll go through the initial choice of the subject, a, a photograph, and explain to you why I think that makes a, a good uh, scene for a watercolour painting. Go through some composition ideas with you, things that I might change things that I'll remove, things that I'll add to the, the painting to, to help the composition, to, to help the overall uh, painting process. Then I'll go through the complete painting process with you from the initial drawing and laying down a wash. We're gonna cover lots of different watercolor techniques, laying down a wash, going in with darker values, adding in the detail, Lifting off, we'll cover that as well. Lifting off, dry brush marks, wet in wet. How to, how to paint a tree, how to create realistic rock shapes as well and the texture of rocks and those all important values. And then at the end, I'll go through a little summary, a little debrief of my painting and try and explain uh, to you what I think think worked worked okay, maybe what I could improve on the next time round as as a little process I, I normally always go through at the end of my paintings just to make sure I can try and think of ways of improving a similar scene next time round. This is my reference photograph kindly donated by Patreon member Doyle. If you become a member of my watercolour club on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, you get to uh, submit suggestions for future videos and source photos. So thanks very much Doyle for this very kind um, uh, donation of your, your photograph and uh, I'd love to try and do a good job at this at this scene. So this is the Castle Rock uh, Capitol Reef National Park in southern Utah in the US. Uh, Doyle's photo, he informs me, hasn't been tampered with at all. So what a lovely scene and the beautiful rich colours, a lovely panoramic view across several ravines to the background. Um, the background mountains, very striking. What a beautiful place and quite a, a suitable subject for watercolour because of the values we've got, lovely darks, lovely lights. We've got warms and cools. We can use lots of different watercolour techniques. Now this is quite a wide scene here and I need to think about composition. And my idea is zooming in Let's just zoom in a little bit. Um, actually, I'll zoom out. <laughs> zoom out and catch a bit of that foreground. And my idea is to have part of the, um, the castle formation here on the left-hand side, just have a, a bit of that sneaking on the left-hand side. This lovely butte rock here formation as well. Um, in the middle and then this tree on the right hand side uh, we've got the shadow of that butte as well so uh, a strong element on the left a strong element on the right focal point in the middle could be the butte catching light against the shadow on the background mountains and uh, we have its we have its shadow uh, going up the the background hills there yellow I detect yellow in those, those background hills there. Lovely deep red of the middle ground. Orangey, orangey red of these, of the uh, castle rock formation and, and some cooler shadows in there. Um, lovely horizontal marks we've got across the middle ground there. I just zoomed back out. And then also what attracted me to this was, um, well, not only that lovely tree with its gnarly old branches, quite complex to 
to deal with from, from a painting point of view. Um, really complex shapes. I'll probably do away with this broken limb here that's going across the side. And I'll just have the tree slightly um, going over into the into the middle of the composition. So it's not, at the moment, it, it, it's sort of pointing away and I want to try and bring it slightly more into the left. Uh, so I'll imagine this this bit here was, was actually, so we've got like a, a sort of um, two main limbs, two main trunks coming out of the ground. Uh, but I was gonna say, look at these lovely blue green grasses and the contrast of those against the red soil the red ground and also if i just zoom out a little bit more um, also these rocks as well and the contrast look at this one the contrast of that rock there that light rock against the darker background beautiful um, and then a lighter rock there against the darker background a little bit of soft, darker shadow. Talking about shadows, uh, zoom in here. This lovely dark vertical shadows, beautiful. And just about to detect some bluer color in, in the a cooler color in those shadows, some faint horizontal lines on the background hills as well some softer shadows just creating the the form of that butte uh, so we've got a vertical side then these these rocks i guess they crumble down with erosion they form this little little slopey ledge there and then it sort of tails off yeah beautiful scene let's see how we get on So first step then, the outline drawing, and I'm painting, I'm going to be painting on Saunders Waterford watercolour paper. This is cold press and 300 grams in weight. So cold press is medium texture, medium roughness. Got a little bit of a surface to it. And my outline drawing is with a 3B pencil so I'm going to create fairly dark lines that I will use to obviously help me in the painting process so I'm just really getting in the main shapes of these rock formations concentrating on the main ones no real detail as regards the little or the, rather the big cracks, um, the vertical and horizontal uh, cracks in these rock formations. There's the background hills. And there's, there's those lovely shadows, which I'm just getting in the outline of that uh, lovely shadow created by this main structure in the middle. A few horizontal, just mark in those, a few horizontal lines. This is the top of some lovely red rocks going across the middle of the scene. And then in front of that, in the foreground, there's almost like a, a cliff edge where there must be a, a steep ravine just beyond this. And that lovely arched tree on the right hand side. So th this was my idea about the, the composition was the tree on the right hand side. So I've, I'm, I'm condensing the scene because I'm working with more of a, a four by three dimension rather than the widescreen uh, image of Dora's photograph. So a bit of a, an arch of the tree, framing that right hand side, 
over on the left hand side we've got the castle in the middle we've got the the butte and the shadow of the butte going um, being cast across the the far background hills and this tree just a few of the main branches I'll make it up as I go along with some of the smaller branches in the foreground I love those almost blue blue green grasses that are struggling on the on the uh, in the foreground here in, the, in growing in the dry rock um, but I, I love their form and that blue against the red of the rock that cool against the warm that would make a a nice feature I think as regards the color scheme now I've chosen to put in three clumps and so a couple close together then one a bit more spaced out and obviously with these grassy clumps I can decide wherever I want them to go I can I can move them around uh, rather than maybe the the formation of the rocks and the castle and the buttes you know that that I need to keep them in context and uh, fairly accurate but anything that's growing a tree grassy clumps I can move those wherever I want to just just to suit the composition that's the drawing done then next step on with some painting and I will describe my color palette to you so the colors I've got on the right hand side at the top and this is my normal color scheme that I've never really changed an awful lot at all ever since I started painting a long long time ago um, uh, neutral to the top burnt umber burnt sienna so coming down from the top burnt sienna yellow ochre viridian green cobalt green which I'm going to be using for those those grassy bits I'm going to love to use those and cerulean blue great for skies cobalt blue ultramarine blue Alizarin Crimson, Windsor Red, which I'm using a bit of now. It's not like a bright red. I, I used to use Cadmium Red, but uh, move now on to the Windsor Red. And below that, we've got Light Red, Cadmium Orange, and Lemon Yellow. I'm starting off by painting the castle or the right hand edge of the castle then a little bit weaker for the mountain range in the background and I'm going to go a little bit sort of like a pale yellow for these background hills which I think we would be looking quite nice against a blue sky that yellow against the blue I think it's a lovely uh, color color combination so pick up that lemon yellow as I say this is a fairly weak wash I'm using a Raphael soft aqua brush for this this is a size six Paint in a little bit of the butte. Tiny bit darker as I come down to the middle of that butte. I have to work quite quickly here on the right hand side it's just beginning to dry and uh, I don't want any nasty I, I want I want it to be a nice sort of flat flattish wash there just moving things along with my finger good thing about fingers is that sometimes when you've got um, a little bit of oil on your 
fingers or natural oil. Uh, you touch you touch some damp. You touch the damp surface that you painted, and you, you, the, the paint just sort of disperses, and you get a, Sometimes you get some nice marks. It's worth worth a little bit of experimentation with. Now here's the base color of the middle ground. And with my brush strokes and the angle of the brush, I'm just getting in some random marks here, not really a traditional way. There I use my fingertips again. You might just see as as I as I touch the paper within it, the, the paint just suddenly dispersed. And you don't get a, a finger mark as such. Bit of lifting off with that brush. I could have wet the brush. I could have um, washed that brush off and got got a little bit of the moisture out. But I just went straight in in for it. You can sometimes get away with it with a dirty brush, a dirtyish brush. Now this foreground, very rich. But it will dry lighter. It might seem quite bright at the moment, but it will uh, dull down a little bit. And it will look lighter when I go in with the shad that the, the darker middle ground that's going to make the the foreground instantly pop, hopefully um, appear a lot brighter. While everything's damp, I'm going to be, so I'm covering the whole paper here, basically, apart from the sky at this stage, covering the whole paper. There's the lovely blue-green grasses. Just drop a little bit of that color into the foreground as well. Now any marks that the the paint is making as regards little blooms or imperfections, I would leave those. I wouldn't attempt to lift them out. I'm just dropping in a little bit of clear water here just to emphasize that because this this nearby surface here is it's strewn with little bits of rock and chippings and so on. Uh, I will lift, lift out a little bit of it just where it's catching some of the light from the left. So the light's coming from the left of course. Everything has been allowed to dry now. I've speeded up the video. Things have gone a little bit lighter, as you can see. So next step is to get in the sky. I wanted the wash of the mountains to dry first before I go in with the sky. Now that's not what I normally do. What I normally do is I paint the sky first. I come I paint the painting from top to bottom and I come down the page and I'll normally drag the sky over the tops of rooftops or the top of a mountain and then come in with the, the background after that and so on down to the bottom. But this, this time I wanted that, that background to dry uh, fully before I go in carefully with the sky, just following that line around here. So it's important to have a brush with a good edge to it, a good point, so I can get in accurately around the ridge of those background mountains.
bit of careful painting around the not perfectly flat top to the background mountains over to the right hand side picked up a bit of lavender there change the brush just twist the brush around to make sure I've got a nice fairly even application of paint now I haven't with that sky I haven't laid down a perfect wash I've gone for more of a, a textured finish I could have pre-wet I could have pre-wet the sky um, to to give myself a really even flat wash but I've gone for more of a a textures approach there because it makes it a bit more interesting and perhaps the appearance of some distant thin clouds. And the lavender I do use sometimes for skies just to just so if if, the, if I detect the sky isn't too blue and uh, I think I think lavender is quite a nice colour to to use sometimes. I do I do also use it for uh, backgrounds in combination with burnt sienna the, those two together are really good for background hills I've draw, I'm drawing the top left corner because I'm going to now start painting the shadows of the castle and this will start to give the painting more depth and range of values the lights will appear suddenly lighter the brush i'm using is more of a medium sized brush i'm mixing up a bit of cobalt blue there was a bit of red in it as well and neutral tint from the top fairly dark but the shadow isn't black it's going to be it's going to contain the colors of the rock so it's got to have some warmth to it yet a, perhaps a little bit cooler as I come down so that's why I use a bit of cobalt blue in those shadows so across the top of the castle, some horizontal marks. It's important here have, I have a brush that's got a good edge to it. Not too much water on the brush. This is, this is thicker paint in consistency than the initial wash I did. So more paint to the water ratio. I'm painting now these very important vertical cracks down, these massive cracks down the, the front of the castle, which is which are creating a bit of drama. There's, there's lovely, um, as I say, the lovely contrast between the, the, the dark of those shadows and the, the lightness of the bits of the, the castle that's catching the light. Down the right hand side, fairly steep slope, it's not vertical on the right hand side. Drag the paint down, doesn't matter if I leave little bits unpainted, they could be tiny pieces of the rock face catching a bit of light. So not perfect and I'll need to add in later on a few horizontal lines, the, uh, the, the strata, the different layers of the, of the rock. Now for the background mountains, the shadows in the background. A bit of a test mark there just to check the values I need to be lighter than what I've just done 
and this is this has probably got more water talking about the ratio of paint to water this will now have more water because watercolor being being a transparent medium uh we've we've got the background mountain showing through this thinner layer whereas the the shadow on the on the castle that was quite thick that was almost obliterating the layer below but this is now going to show subtly the the color the the hue that we had we have on the background and the nice thing about Doyle's photo uh, the time of day that it was taken is that we have the the background shadows framing that middle butte so it's it's emphasizing the light it's framing that butte giving it some form and again another, another bit of contrast a range of values that we've got so come down the right hand side of the butte use my fingertips again just to lift off or move the paint just in it just a little bit where I want it being careful not to actually smudge it too much now the shadow of the butte very important this this is another important element of the composition there's almost four key things going across the, the scene from left to right. We've got the right hand edge of the castle. We've got the butte um, being thrown into the light. Then we've got, thirdly, we've got the shadow of the butte and then that lovely tree arching over into, well, mainly over into the left as the fourth element. Right, just down the right hand side of that shadow and drag it off to the right that'll probably be hidden with the that little trail of shadow will probably be hidden by the tree or that uh, darker middle ground i'm going to paint in later on next i'm going to paint the middle ground with a fairly rich red, the dark red colour, and leave just a few little bits of the paper unpainted, just where again there can be a tiny bit of a light catching something that's that's uh, protruding out. So same brush, make sure I've got a good edge to it. And starting from the left, in more of a horizontal way, creating the, painting the top edge of this middle ground uh, rock formation. I'm giving myself quite a hard edge along the top. I'm going dark down towards the bottom because that's the that little canyon or um, valley just beyond the the foreground uh, cliff edge here. So I need to be quite dark. I'll go quite dark in there. So as I come down with this red colour, I'm going to add in some darker darker colour, mainly with neutral tint, just to make it quite dark. And the other important thing here is creating the, the actual, by painting around the grass with a brush and a sharp edge, I'm creating those little uh, grass, bit, bits of grass, the, the, uh, the leaves of the grass. They're quite sort of stiff, bluey green leaves which will suddenly give them some form. And also I need to give form to the very edge of the, the platform here. 
I think uh, where this photograph was taken from, I think it's quite a popular location for taking photographs. There we are. That's trying to create that uh, grass just by a bit of negative painting around the grass. Need a sharp edge for doing that. Could have I could have done that with a a rigger brush. Over to the middle. As I come over to the right hand side, I need to go a little bit lighter, a bit weaker with the wash. I'm going to add in more water, change the colour a little bit away from that dark red. And this is where I need to start now thinking about the form of that tree. This is the bottom of that uh, tree trunk, which sort of forks from, from the base of the tree into a couple of limbs, a couple of uh, trunks. So just add in a bit of thicker colour there to the this red rock just to give me some soft dark areas. Paint around that third clump And then around the right hand side of the tree. Picked up a little bit of clear water and with a, a thin brush now. Just add in a few horizontals and then with this clear water that's going to create some nice lines, just a little bit of lightness where there's uh, a bit of light hitting a ledge on that uh, middle, those, those middle dark rocks there. I'll go in with some darker paint later on just to create some darker shadow in the crevices. Back to these grasses and with that thin brush mainly on the right hand side, just where, on the opposite side to where the, the sun's coming from, just creating a few little vertical strands of the, of the grass. Just really a darker, a darker colour than the actual grass itself, so the cobalt, the cobalt green. And after I've done this, I'll go in with a bit of shadows behind it. The foreground, which is now, of course, quite dry, I can just pick up and emphasize some of the lighter areas that I had from the initial wash. Where it dried, where I just lift off lifted off a little bit of the paint on that first application. I can just 
use those as little little flat rocks and shingles and so on and then just with my medium sized mop brush here just go around and introduce different intensities of color a bit of shadow behind the the grass there and then that middle clump I don't want to be too detailed with the foreground. Try and keep it fairly loose and just giving the impression of the this uneven surface and some of these little little rocks and boulders. I use the same technique for if I was doing a, a beach or a, a pebbly beach or any sort of rock rocky uh, surface um, so just lay down lay down the base color and then maybe going with another darker color going around the rocks and then a bit of darker shadow behind some of those lighter areas just to create some form to little stones and, and boulders and so on I think that clump just needs a few more darker bits and then that third one forgot to do that first time around but there we are a um, few little vertical marks of the of the leaves That creates a nice, this darker paint creates a little bit of a, a nice soft shadow in some of those, behind some of those rocks. Fairly random, just over that foreground. Neutral tint. So a few more grassy, grassy bits there. Bring that shadow, that middle clump shadow, over to the left hand and grass clump. The tree needs a bit of shade to the right hand edge, just trailing off. Not too thick a shadow, but that's, that's going to create a nice bit of form to that, that right hand edge. Bit of flickering, a bit of splattering of paint. So I picked up, picked up a small brush, bit of paint on that, tap it against my finger. That's a bit more controlled. You could also hold the brush horizontally and then just tap it with your, your finger. But it's a bit easier to control when you, when you tap the brush against your finger, holding the finger still. Be a little bit more controlled. Next, the tree, the, the top parts of the branches, which might be a little bit in shade. Now, 
you can really, with trees, you can make up your own formation, these branches, depending on what, um, where it is in the composition and the, the sort of dominant uh, angle of these, of these uh, branches. That's burnt umber I'm picking up there. Fairly thick mix of burnt umber. And then this viridian green. I think that gives a nice foliage colour for trees, that combination. Um, if it's not green enough, I can add in a little bit of yellow from the bottom there. And then just test. that. Now I need to, I'm looking at the photograph and seeing every tree has a different overall shape of the canopy, um, whether it be a, whether it be a, a conical shape or like a column or a, or a dome or a ball. Um, this is, um, it's quite a it's quite a sparse canopy, not a very dense canopy. We can see a lot of the the background through through the canopy, so it's not too dense. And then we've we've got these groupings of, of leaves. Have a few wayward leaves outside the the general um, canopy area. And I need to be consciously thinking about not to make it too perfect, not to make it too symmetrical, fairly random in my grouping of these uh, of these leaves. And also introducing different strengths of green. And on the right hand side, being away from the direction of the sun, going a little bit darker on the right hand side. up to the top. I'll paint in some thin branches later on, just to connect up some of those outer, outer leaves. Really, we're down to the finer detail now of the painting. And I'll need to add in the a, a lot more of the verticals of the rock formations, just to give them a, a lot more form, particularly in the middle ground as well, going quite dark there. I'm using a, a small synthetic round brush now. It could be anything. This, this one actually is a, I think it's a Michael Klein painting uh, brush, synthetic brush. Size six, I believe, and quite nice for getting a good point to it. There we are, that starts to give that bit of the castle there, some more form, um, some fainter lines in the background. So weaker, weaker in value. Going around the back of the butte.
thinking about the sequence of steps. So I've got the, I've put those shadows in first, and then I can go over with these darker horizontals as the net as a, a later stage. Much easier to do it that way around rather than putting in all of my horizontal marks and the shadow over the top might just smudge out some of those lines far better to to add in those bigger areas of shadow first and then going with those horizontal marks and maybe going a bit darker in the shady areas but not so not so dark in the lighter areas I want to pay a bit of attention to the the buttes here because it's quite an important it's almost like a focal point of the painting I actually don't think much about focal points in a in a painting uh, it's just it's just not um, always an important thing for us I think some paintings don't have a focal point and some paintings have maybe two focal points I'm not I'm not um, a person that thinks about one key focal point but I think in this particular instance there is this uh, there is this um, lovely um, butte in the middle so I need to be a little bit more precise in my painting of that and some of the crevices and so on now this middle ground These lovely, really is, it does look like a beautiful place. Um, this middle ground, I need to add in these darker crevices, which will give some form, mainly horizontal, with a slight, a slight uh, slope to them, slight, a slight uh, slant to them. So I went in with that deep red, I had lifted off a little bit of the red, but I went darker down into the valley that's just beyond the foreground. This is one of those subjects where you need to perhaps look very closely at the rock formations and see just a praise, just familiarize yourself with how they form and thinking about their their the depth and the volume and where the cracks are and the angle of those cracks and how were they formed it really does make you think and that will then help that sort of studying yeah it's, it's sort of observation and studying the subject really does help you in the, in the application in the in the uh painting process to to hopefully try and get fairly realistic a good impression of the form of these rocks now going over to the right don't want too much detail there most of the detail is in the middle tiny bit over on the right hand side Now that the foliage has dried a little bit, I can go in with some of the darker leaf areas. Yeah, but I've done that too soon. After I, I painted the first leaf, first uh, bit of leaves, I would have got soft edges. I want harder edges here. The, the sun is stronger, so I need a, a harder edge. So that's why the, the, the leaves of the light green leaves they've dried a little bit go in with a bit of darker color here and there i 
if you do want to go yourself at uh, some of the paintings that I've done, then take a look at my Patreon site, which is www.patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T. Up there, I have a lovely community of watercolour artists from all over the world, and I set monthly painting projects. Plus, there's loads of other postings there and live streams, regular monthly live streams. But once a month, I do set painting projects based on videos. If you're up on, if you're a Patreon member, you get to see these videos before general release on YouTube. So I, I try to give a, a sneak peek of these videos to, to my uh, Patreon friends. And uh, who knows, this might be a future painting project. You never know. But you get a critique as well when you take part, when you're a participant in the in these painting projects, then you get a critique from me. And depending on the level, it might be it might be a short text critique, or it might be a longer video critique where I actually create a little video for you and just give my appraisal of, of your painting and things that went well, things that in my opinion may not have gone so well or could be improved on or some extra hints and tips for you. So please take a look at my Patreon site, patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot. Love to see you up there. So with a smaller brush, I'm just going around the painting and picking up on little bits more detail that I need, um, twigs. Addressing any uh, darker areas that just need a bit more application of some shadow. I think uh, the middle ground needs a, a few more darker lines in there. For me, what works well in this picture, as well as the big range of values, the the big the the areas of darkness, the areas of lightness, are the are the warms and cools. So we've got the cool sky, then the warmer middle ground, and a lighter value for the foreground, and the, those cooler grasses, which I, I think uh, look lovely. Um, they certainly in the photograph. May not may not be so lovely in the painting, but that's that to me. That's a pleasing combination. That coolness against the warmth, blues against yellows, blues against reds. Few little dots. Yeah, I could have done a bit more splattering, to be honest with you, just to create these little create the impression of some stones or chippings in there i don't want to overdo some of that grass or to be conscious of not overdoing it yeah some of the rocks in the middle here, they need some darker shadow on the right hand side. And I can go around some of those lighter areas as well. So to the right hand side of the lighter areas. This is a, a thin rigger brush from Lebanon. 
the handmade brushes with a bamboo handle. And I can get I can get lines as thin as a human hair with this brush. Um, lovely feel to it. So this is a, a thin synthetic brush from Lebensun. And the guard going all the way around that canopy just introducing a few little thin twigs and branches there. I use this rigger brush down down the foreground just a tiny bit. I could have actually used this brush for the grass. That could have been quite nice with the when I was doing going back, when I was doing that middle red splurge across the middle, I could have just um while it was quite damp, I could have just used a, a thin rigger just to drag it down into the, the top of the grass shapes to get some um, very finer lines coming down. The benefit of hindsight, there we go. Very thin verticals there. And think about the the round base, so so not not a, a pure horizontal line, just a little bit of a a curve in it. So go down on the left hand side, then across the middle, then then up on the right hand side. We may be I'm not sure where the the eye level would be at the base of that view, but maybe we're just looking ever so slightly. Uh, down on that down on that scene This brush hasn't got much paint on it at all now. It's just really very little tiny marks it's making. What I'm doing here is just connecting everything together and with those, those thinner marks, it, just those little marks can make an awful lot of difference. Back to a, a bigger synthetic brush now. Just noticed a an area there on that on that red middle ground that just needed a bit more shadow on the right hand side. They're there as well. And I think I'm done. I'll hop now into the summary. Here is the M painting, Capitol Wreath National Park in Southern Utah. A lovely scene to paint in watercolor. And as I normally do with my paintings, do a little debrief with myself, just go through what I thought worked quite well, what I might improve on next time around. But a lovely scene to paint that captured my imagination. Lo lovely colours, lovely contrasts, a depth to the painting, it had a background, had a background there, had a, had a middle ground as well, and these lovely um, clumps of grass in the foreground. The 
Also the contrast of the cools against the warms, that cool sky, the warm uh, background hills, and then the warmth of the, the middle ground against the coolness of those grasses. But trying to capture the rock formations and different edges, hard edges, soft edges, trying to capture the essence of that tree, that old tree that's uh, clinging on to life on the, on the edge of the cliff. And also the texture of those rocks and shingles and stones on the, on the foreground. So I'm quite happy with the overall result. Maybe if I was to be critical of myself, perhaps that edge there is just a little bit too hard. If I did again, I might go in a little bit, uh, a little bit of a softer edge to that. Also, what I might try and do is get in more of the castle rock there on the left. Um, possibly if I move the whole thing to the right a little bit so that butte was more um, there, if you like, and this rock came over a bit more so we can get more of those lovely um, vertical shadows in there. And then I can make more of a play of the red, this red foreground as well. But as I say, maybe that edge is just a little bit too hard. Also on the, the grassy, the grassy shapes as well. Possibly I could have made more of a play of some thinner lines in here just to try and emphasize the the the, the sort of graph leaf shapes. Um, probably could have introduced a few more other bits of vegetation in in there. I think it worked actually missing out that tree in the middle of uh, Doyle's photograph that for me that didn't bring anything to it so I missed out that tree there uh, but yeah hopefully you like it and we'll catch up with you on the next video